What's up everybody, I'm Stephanie Anderson, DJ Step 1, and today I'm going to show you how I set up my Ableton project for my push performance. For this performance, I wanted to integrate my DJ setup, a turntable and a mixer, with push. So I have an audio interface here, and the output of my DJ mixer is routed through the audio interface and into Ableton. In my project, I have two tracks set up so I can both play and record audio from my turntable during the performance. So on the scratch track, I have the monitoring set to input, and that's because I wanted to have a track set up that was always available for live scratching no matter which other track was record enabled. So in the beginning I have a pad sample playing on the turntable, and then I record enable the pluck track, and input monitoring is what lets me hear the pad sample play even though I have the pluck track record enabled. But I also wanted to be able to do some live looping in the performance, which means that I needed a separate track set to auto monitoring, and that way I could seamlessly switch between input and playback. So at one point in the performance, I scratch a chord sample, and you can hear that after I record it, it starts looping. Since I was using a turntable for this performance, I thought it would be fun to sample something from vinyl on the fly and then turn that into a playable instrument on push, so let me show you how I did that. First, I recorded the sample into a clip on an audio track. And then I converted it to a simpler device. I adjusted the start point of the sample, and then when I switch over to note mode, I can play it as a melodic instrument. Something new that I incorporated into my live setup for this project is a MIDI foot controller, and I did that because I knew that there would be times during my performance when I would want to trigger certain things while I was in the middle of playing or recording. I mapped most of these foot pedals so that they launch different clips or scenes, but there are two pedals in particular that I wanted to talk about. This pedal is mapped to the session record button, which lets me start and stop recording using the foot controller. This was really helpful because I could record and loop scratching without taking my hands off of the turntable and mixer. So any performer or musician who needs both hands to play an instrument could use a foot controller with push to do live looping. And then there's this pedal here, and I set this up to help me with transitions. Sometimes when I'm arranging a song, I'll create maybe half a bar of silence before a drop to give the drop more impact. So I added a utility device to the master track, which kills the volume. And then I mapped the foot pedal to the device activator switch. By default, the device is off, but I can stomp the foot pedal to turn it on and create a break in the music. And this technique actually works in conjunction with my sound effects track. Because normally, even if you drop out the music in a certain section, you'll have something else playing in the background like a sound effect. So on the sound effects track, I set the track output to external out. That means it will bypass the master track so that the sound effects continue to play even though everything else is muted. While I was setting up this live performance, I ended up using the clip launch settings as a way to help me transition between different song sections. On the sound effects track, there are different versions of a vocal chop in three clip slots. Keep it real, keep it real, 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 real. I set the clip launch quantization on those clips to none, so they're ignoring the global quantization value, which is one bar. So that lets me trigger samples in session mode while I'm stopping and launching other clips. Basically, it's like having drum rack pads in session mode. Keep it real, real. 
I knew for the ending of this track that I wanted to use a synth instrument, and I found two different sounds that I liked. They actually sounded really good layered on top of one another, so I decided to play one instrument for the first four bars and then add the second one for the last four bars. So let's take a look at how I did that. So the synth track is actually two instruments grouped in an instrument rack. One chain has an operator device and the other has a sampler. I mapped a macro control, synth2, to the chain volume on the sampler. At the beginning of the final song section, the volume is all the way down. And I play the first instrument on push for four bars and then I use the encoder to bring in the second instrument. Thanks for watching the walkthrough. I had so much fun putting together this live performance and I hope some of these tips help you with your own projects. I'll see you next time.